Okay, we're back. Volume two. We're back. Volume two of, <laughs> of the Polo Archive. Yes. How many? How many episodes do you think there is worth of Polo? At least fifty. Fifty. More. <laughs> yeah. 50 e- oh, geez. Okay. We better hurry this up. Then we got to at least do one a week. Okay. Sorry, we missed last week. We're back. This is episode two of the Polo Archive. We got HD cameras, guys. What the fuck do you think of that? We're investing in this shit, guys. So get your viewers up. Tell your friends. Yo, go share this video. Seriously. Hit the like button. Hit subscribe. All that shit. I know that from my, watching my kids watch YouTube. Hit the yeah. like. Hit subscribe. Not for that. So, Jess, what are, what are, we, what are you going to show us today? Um, so today, I was, I've been slammed this week. So. I didn't have a lot of time to put it together, but I'm just going to show an array of country jackets and kind of talk about country jackets. Okay, uh, so why have we been slammed? We've been slammed because you guys probably know now we're in, we're in Hudson Bay, across Canada. We yep. are crushing Christmas sweaters. I don't know how easy Jesse can move his camera, but probably on the other side of this camera is a fucking mountain of Christmas sweaters. It's actually not that bad now because we've been moving through so many, but you can see Bale's still there. Piles over there, industrial dryers. We're processing, man. Yeah, so we've been cranking, cranking sweaters. So, by the way, if anybody out there is a store owner that wants to get some wholesale sweaters, I don't know how many whole, whole, wholesale orders we can do this year, but we, we do some do more. We need them. Holler. Okay. Okay, but into the polo. We're not going to waste much time. We're going deep. Okay. Let's go. Into the polo, guys. So All we right. got we got country jackets today. Country jackets today. Is this your whole? Is, is this your whole array of country jackets, or is this just like a set? This is a, this is like a smattering of kind of like just some cool ones. But I got tons up on the wall. I can use some some more of the heaters, and I have. I'm not doing any of the uh, RLMC. There's certain ones I'm not showing today. I'm just going to show a cool array and show you some interesting shit. Okay. Before we get into this, you are wearing a. Looks like you're wearing a cardigan, but it's actually a champion reverse weave cardigan. Correct. That's correct. Snap button cardigan. Yeah, fucking rare. Most people out watching this probably haven't even seen this style. And the and the Ralph shirt. How old is that Ralph shirt you're wearing? It's nineties. Don't know the year. It's dope though. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Okay. So, these are cotton twill motorcycle jackets. Here's one of them. Super dope style. I love it. It's pretty true to form with respect to the uh, little O-ring pull tabs, which are, you know, those are classic vintage style. It's uh, half belted, as you can see. Yeah, pretty rad and pretty... um Pretty classic for Ralph to create a garment from a silhouette, but just change up the fabric. Absolutely. These are women's, 1971. You can see there. Got a couple of these. I love these because you'll see in the first few jackets, like I just love these twill colors, man. Like this really great green. Here's another one. It's the exact same jacket, just done in a green. These are super dope. These are women's as well. This is basically a fishing vest. Yeah, fishing vest, although it's, it is, again, in a cotton twill with the backpack pouches. Super dope. Look at that color. It's faded pink. So pretty. All right. Moving on, guys. Beautiful parka here. And this is a, kind of a nod to the classic fishtail parka, U.S. Army. Which so you can see is an here, M- M19, M1951, correct? Yeah, or- correct. 51, yeah. It's the fish, original fishtail parka with the attached hood. Later, they made a, a fishtail parka with the detachable hood. 
I'm talking about the U.S. Army, and it's got the snaps and everything so you can snap it up in the back. Okay? Cool. Lots of great... Do you, do you think that color was originally like the pink or was it a peach? No, this is a peach. Okay. This is like a faded orange peach. It's a women's as well. Um, but lots of great details. It's like these uh, leather stoppers for all the drawstrings on the bottom, on the top. Great zippers, like very similar to like the, the original military zippers, which were mostly Conmar. Um, yeah, beautiful jacket. Again, I just love these colors, man. Um, here's a men's parka. It's also country. Um, just beautiful style, you know. It's got the great zipper flap, again, with the leather stoppers. Um, I don't know if this one has any emblems on it at all. It's just clean. This is another men's. This one actually had a, a detachable hood, which unfortunately I don't have, but you can see it buttoned on. So here's the detachable hood, and it buttons on. Which, again, is very you know classic because that's, that's a fishtail too? Same jacket, basically. This is not a fishtail. But it's still styled like that, right? Or is it styled like an M50, like a, like a field jacket? Yeah, it's styled like an M51 field jacket. I mean, loosely. There's other else. Um, but it does stop her chin strap as well, that buttons. Really cool. And this jacket isn't a zipper jacket, it's a button jacket. Um, again, there's no emblems, but one cool thing is these great cuffs. You can see that. It's got the double flap. Yeah, that's cool. This again, like just great details. You know, like riveted uh, breather holes in the armpits and stuff like that. These are women's jackets, fireman toggle jackets with the cool Lauren flag patches. And it's like country it. tag on these? Country tag, yeah. They're ladies. So did they even have the Lauren line back in those days? No. They didn't. But what do, you th what do you think? So like this is, we're talking late 80s here for this stuff. What yeah. do you think these cost retail? Back then, I, I imagine they were probably a few hundred bucks. Um, yeah. But again, if you know, put it in the comments. I mean, in the late 80s, I was 10 years old, 11 yeah, years old. Yeah, totally. You don't have any with tags, eh? None of these, no. Um, but talk, just like speaking on the Lauren thing, I'm going to get into this particular line in future videos, but this is Blue Label, Ralph, okay? But again, this was a women's line, and it was all Lauren patches. It was a military-inspired line, and uh, I've got a number of pieces from this line. It's quite ornate with, like, the faux bullion stuff going on and, and gold. Uh, that, that piece is so wild. It's like full sergeant regalia. It is, man. And it's a down jacket. And uh, like it was all, all the uh, buttons and snaps and zips are all gold color. And it's, it's like, it's like, it's got, it's even got the shoulder. It's like puffy shoulders. That's so like power 90s woman vibe. It is. That's so fucking Aspen, you know? Rich pitch <laughs> Aspen vibe. Yeah. All right. Here's a really cool jacket. This is country tag, but it's polo high tech. So the first women's high tech stuff was on country tags. Um, this is lined with red polar fleece, polar tech. Um, it's just a beautiful jacket. Again, the color combination is incredible. The teal kind of turquoise, green, blue. Um, it's got like the double shoulder. Right? So, and these snap on and snap off, which doesn't really do much, but um, pretty interesting. That detail is kind of uh, like a wax jacket, riding jacket detail. That's right. Um, cool thing. So, I will show you guys in future videos too. I have I, maybe most of the colors in the high tech fleece for women, which was also on Country Tag, it was a full zip hooded, high-tech polar fleece 
with the high tech patch with a country tag made for women. Incredible color combination. I'll show you those in later videos. We'll match it up with the matching fleece and everything. Moving on. This is a really cool line that I like that was put out by country, which was again military inspired, European military inspired to be exact. Um, here's like a short field jacket. Um, I think it's inspired from a French jacket, but I'm not certain. Um, just really cool details like this buckle at the bottom on the side, button up. It's a V neck jacket, short coat. Really cool. Super weird style. It looks like an Ike jacket, except for the neckline. The neckline looks, I don't like, even know. Like an early chore jacket, you know, the short ones with the V neck, right? Yeah, I guess you're right. Those train jackets. But yeah, the, the buckle and stuff is total Ike jacket. Completely. Another one from this line. Really cool. Big buttons, double breasted. Um, it's got like, uh, it's got the hook clasp at the neck to really get it tight if you want. Um, yeah, just really, really cool jacket. Definitely modeled after European military. Here's another version. Again, double breasted. Country tag, women's. This is slightly longer and it's a, it's a heavier cotton. The buttons are extremely ornate. If you can see that. They've yeah, got, it's got, a, it's almost like a, a band jacket, but obviously it's military. Um, a very formal, like officer's garb. Yeah, absolutely. Really cool. Here's another one. This is more like a shirt, but I just have it in the, in the collection with the other stuff. Um, you know, really cool with the Appalax, the RL embroidery, the star. Really ornate buttons, RL with the anchor. You can see that. Cool cut on the back as well. You can see that. Yeah, it, the cut is jacket. The back cut is jacket. Yet yeah, yeah. the weight is t is shirt. Right? It's like weight really a mix. Like between. a button up shirt. Exactly. It's yeah. like a khaki button up shirt, like a Blake weight. Good example of a um, a mashup piece. Mashup. I mean, they're basically all mashups at this point. They really are. Here's another version. Actually, sorry, this is the jumper. Oh, so that's this, so sick. This is a long sleeve short all for women. So you can see these are shorts. I'm unfortunately missing the belt on this one, but it's even got back pockets. Um, just such a cool piece with the little chin strap flap, the three clasps, clasps at the neck, epaulets again. Just cool, man. Cool stuff. That's a wild one. That is a wild one. Have you ever put Julia in that one? No, but I'm trying. <laughs> Jules? Um, so here's, here's the jacket in white. Uh, slightly different version. It's belted. Cool pleated pockets. Um, it's got the R on the star, but obviously we're, we got red detail on this one. Interesting piping around the neck. Pleated back. You know what we call that, Drew? Pussy style. Pussy style. The Japanese call this pussy style. Yeah. Woo! Yo, Woo! pussy style is what's up for obvious yeah. reasons, but also because it actually, it, 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 on true vintage, it denotes like a certain age and detailing. That's correct. Here's the short coat. So again, on this one, you got the side buckle, right? But then you got the same details as the other one with the pleated pocket, epaulets, the same neck, although the blue on this one is completely faded out. But really cool piece, very classy. That's what I have for jackets in that line. I have some other bits that I'll show in future videos that are just in bins. Um, these I absolutely love. These are men's jackets. I wear these bad boys. They're quilted, down-filled jackets. Okay, so this reminds me of a certain jacket. Don't say it. If you, if you can, what, what does this jacket remind you of? Go put that down in the comments. True vintage, right? We're talking? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Where's the inspiration from, guys? So these jackets have, these are from 1990. 
They have the ski jumper, leather patch on the shoulder, country tag, great ribbing, very wearable. These are great in Canada. Love these bad boys. So I got a few colors of these. Got the orange. There's other colors as well. Still trying to cop other colors. So if you got them, holler, the black. So we'll just say it. So ba- th- like th- this whole jacket is basically a it, it, inspired by the LL Bean quilted diamond quilt jacket, but the difference is the bottom rib. Yes. The bottom rib on the LL Bean actually doesn't have a bottom rib. It's open bottom. That's right. This is more like a bomber. Yeah. But the, yeah, the cuffs so and the collar and the cuffs are, are pretty much same as the L.L. Bean. Yeah. So here's a very weird anomaly on this jacket. Okay. You got the same patch, but it's slightly smaller. And this one's on a blue label. Um, I just included it because it's the exact same jacket. If anyone knows why this particular one is on a blue label, holler in the comments. Uh, this particular one's made in Singapore. Another quilted jacket, except this isn't a heavy canvas with leather reinforced shoulders. Rib, rib cuffs. Super strange cut on the leather. Flannel plaid lining. That's the back. And this is a men's jacket. Men's country. Staying within the duck canvas realm. We got two beauty hunting jackets. I didn't know I had doubles of this until I started putting them together. But yeah, I got doubles. So if someone wants one, holler. I'll That's like it. just a super classic duck's back or something. Very yeah. standard hunting jacket. Very standard. So it's got a great weight to it. That's like a, such a, that cut, that whole hunting jacket, so timeless. I love that style. Me too. Here we got another duck canvas jacket. This is more like a Filson style with the, uh, you know, what do they call it? Or a, or a black bear style with the double shoulder, yeah. which they call the rain stopper because typically what would happen is this would get wet, but your underlayer wouldn't. Yeah. Um, and that style, the Filson's, the Filson's called the Mackinac. So that's, uh, that's the style. Yeah. Um, okay. And also Pioneer made those. Yeah. Pioneer Canadian company, by the way. This one's lined in plaid wool lining. It's a men's jacket. Interesting that uh, it's got like a nylon uh, lining, quilted lining on the sleeves only. And then this has your uh, duck pouch in the back. So this pocket goes right through to the other side. Now here's a really classy jacket. You can see this is long. But it's really modeled after early aviator jackets, where this whole piece would come up to keep your neck and chin protected and buckle around. So companies like Spalding made these at around the turn of the century in leather and different materials. And these were some of the earliest aviator style jackets. Um, yeah, we're talking like this is like World War I. Yeah. Now, you can see this is like a really ornate chin strap that actually is removable. It buttons on one side to attach to the jacket, and then you could buckle it. Um, It also has a removable. This collar is like a collar liner, and it buttons in if you can see that. Okay? So, again, just very ornate. The details is what makes these pieces. This has a houndstooth uh, cotton lining. And uh, yeah, it's, it's funny how, you know, back in that era, you didn't see short coats as much as long coats, right? And right. The, the flight coats were no different. But then eventually what happened was people started to chop them, right? People were like, this is not functional. Like I can't like riding a horse with this big, long jacket whack. So they start or whatever it would be, they cut them. And that's how the first, the first motorcycle jackets were cut in half, big double-breasted leather trench coats. Yep. And then they were like, that is, you know, it's protective. Let's actually turn what they reworked into what is now known as like the, uh, the motorcycle jet. That's right. 
couple more quick details. Leather reinforced cuffs, adjustable straps on the sleeves. Got these really cool little leather tabs on the back. I'm not sure what their function would have been, but it's pretty cool detail. And then you got these little uh, D-ring D-rings on the belt, which I'm sure was taken from some type of old vintage jacket. What the actual function of that was, I'm not certain. Um, and then this is a pleated back, which has um, a strap that would have buttoned here, except it's missing the button, unfortunately. But yeah, double-breasted, really cool, interesting jacket. A lot of the stuff, guys, I just collect because it's cool. I mean, I don't think I've ever worn this particular jacket, although I aspire to at one point in life with a pipe maybe hanging out of my mouth. But it's just not the kind of thing that I rock on the daily. Really cool women's jacket. It's got the fireman's clips. It's plaid wool. This is a heavy wool jacket lined with cotton, corduroy collar with a chin strap which is adjustable corduroy, by the way. Okay. One piece back, pretty plain back. But um, again, a lot of cool details. Like you got corduroy on the inside of the cuffs. You got rivets at key points so that we don't rip. I feel like that would have been a hefty price tag on that one. Got a couple leathers, pretty standard leathers. This is a cool three-pocket leather, definitely styled after a vintage jacket. Got a rib uh, collar. It's got pleated shoulders. And uh, we've got a, a cotton twill plaid lining on this one. It's a men's jacket. Cool three-pocket style. It's sort of A1 styling. Yeah, it's, it's very similar to an A1 styling. Here we have another leather jacket. This is a suede jacket. Well, actually, these are both suede. Sorry. The last one was suede. Um, yeah, again, with the cotton plaid liner. Cool four-pocket style. You know, almost like chore jacket pocket configuration, where you have one pocket with the flap, one open pocket, and then you got two, two pouch pockets at the bottom. The pockets are also lined, guys, with the plaid tw uh, cotton twill. So, yeah, it's another simple but stylish country jacket. On the last episode, we saw the Polo USA flag country tees. So I figured I'd show you a really cool little short jacket. This is also loosely inspired from a military jacket. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so it's a men's jacket. And it's got the epaulets and whatnot. These are attached epaulets so they don't button. And nice print on the back. This is a cool one. It's kind of like the classic Harrington jacket. Um, again, it's a four pocket, two slant pockets, flat pocket, and an open pouch pocket. Um, it's got the little chin strap. And this is an interesting indigo denim plaid. That's super cool. Very cool. This is the exact same jacket in a chambray, except it doesn't have, no, this is the exact same jacket. Sorry. Chin strap, same pockets, same everything. Chambray. Cool cat eye buttons. This is a women's denim polo country jacket with a really cool shawl collar, corduroy collar, and it's got a floral print cotton lining. So, funky one here, three pocket style. This is a men's jacket, denim, denim fireman jacket, country. Uh, I believe, no, it's not. It's, it's very similar to the wool one I showed you before. Um, it's got the riveted cuffs and the fireman clasps. Uh, yeah, beauty jacket. Now, here's just a classic. Polo Country denim jacket, four pocket, cuffs, simple back. Yeah, that's a mashup of like a chore jacket and a classic tr uh, trucker jacket. Yeah. Here's one for all the logo heads. 
for all the print heads. So Polo Country Women's Jacket, really cool. Obviously, you know, this is, I believe this was the very first bear. And it, there's some nicknames for this bear, although I can't, they don't come to mind, but they have to do with the bear's kind of evil look. You see how it kind of looks like almost like a wolverine or like devil bear. Kind of so, fucking. but like typically, don't they just call this a sitting bear, or is that? Yeah, but there's versions. If I, I think I'm Eagle not really bear. a big bear guy. I'm not a Dead, big bear guy. Dead so. bear. So, anyway, this is a sit down bear women's jacket, polo country. This is one that I've worn quite a bit. Polo country chore jacket, showing the wear too. Yeah, that one has a good look. That one looks more authentic than the rest. Yeah. This is a classic made in USA four pocket chore styled pretty much directly off of all the classics. Leaves, how much, how much of that sun fade do you think is real versus manufactured? I think it's, it's very real. I don't think um, they were doing a lot of like, you know, like what they do with double RL where they're actually like stressing and distressing things. They weren't doing that with country, as far so that, as that that thing has a sick fade. Then, yeah, man, real wear. Here's another one modeled after your like classic '91. Uh, it's got like is, a '91 J or '91 LJ or LJ. Just got one recently, actually. So um, that, no, that's a Lee jacket, guys. You'll see this. This is like basically a straight copy of a Lee jacket. Yeah. Got the half belt at the back with the side buckles. Does the Lee jacket though have that half back? I don't think it does. I don't think the Lee one does, but certain ones do. I don't think it's just, this isn't a straight copy of the Lee, but there's like Big Macs and, you know, Dickies back in the day made these. A lot of them were lined with like a Troy blanket liner. Um, a lot of them did have the side buckles. I don't think the Lees did. No. But the, it front, the, the front is definitely like pretty close to a Lee. Yeah, with the scoop pocket. If you want to check out a really cool Big Mac one, go on my Instagram, at Jesse Heifetz. Cool. Right, right. I just got a, uh, a really dope Big Mac one for us this week. The only difference is it's line, but you can see the reference if you go on my Instagram. I love this parka. It's a lighter weight denim. It's women's. Um, Hooded denim parka with the summer. Great cuff details. Really cool stoppers. These are metal, guys. No plastic. And it's got a zipper, too, under the, under the flap. Now, we've seen this jacket three times. Now, here it is in a heavy denim. I've shown it to you in a plaid denim, a chambray, and here you are with the heavyweight denim. So many colors, so many options. So many variations, endless. And here we go with the denim blazer. Weird one with the uh, hand warmers, slant hand, hand warmer warmers. Pockets. And warmer slash pouch pockets, you know? Yeah, so weird. Kind of funky. It's got buckles on the side. Very, very interesting mashup. Taking, like, something that's, like, you know, like, the look of wearing, like, a, a guy blazer for a girl, but then adding these, like, jacket details. Yeah. So, guys, there you have it for this episode. Ran you through some country jackets. We're going to be getting into way more stuff. There's tons of stuff here. That was good. Right there. There's a lot. We didn't, touch, we didn't even touch red line stuff yet. Yeah, that, that, uh, that was a really good episode for interesting design because country, there's, there's references in every one of those pieces, right? A lot of the lines we're going to get into are more just like interpret, like fresh interpretations or graphic heavy things or different stylings. But that line you can pinpoint almost all those details. Indeed. Thanks for joining us, guys. Stay tuned. We're going to be doing one a week. We will see you on the next one.